Hello, friends, Romans, and also countrymen, and welcome back to my Redstone world, Redstone Recipes with Splice. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at my PvP game setup again. So, I've added a few command blocks here just for convenience, and I haven't really added much. I've added these, but they don't really do anything at this point. Um, but uh, I have added a few things into the first time setup. Uh, I've added all this team stuff over here, so I've added the pregame team. Um, and what that does is it just puts everyone in a pregame team as soon as you hit this button, and it also puts, um, it also creates the pregame team. And the pregame team, all that is, is just a team to hold people before anything starts, so it's easier to sort people, um, and you can transfer them back into that team and apply effects to that team, uh, rather than having to apply effects to everyone. And it just makes it easier to sort through people who are playing and not playing. So... Then there are uh, these ones here, which set up the two teams, uh, red team and blue team. And then I also added these, which are uh, connected to when the, um, the round ends. So when the round ends, it sets the friendly fire to false. So team members can't hit each other uh, when this whole shenanigans, shenanigans, when all of that engages. Um... Now over here, I added in those same blocks, except it sets those both to true. Uh, and that is during the round, you will be able to hit your team members as well as uh, opposing team member or opposing team people. Um, so that's that. Now one of the other things that I added that's pretty neat and clever that um, I experimented with a lot is a thing where what happens is when this redstone gets powered here, um, and you know what I can do, actually? Um, oh, no, there's no good way to do this. Never mind. I lied. Um, what happens is this is this whole line is consistently um, being powered because these are the, the effects. I also commented this effect out um, with double slashes. That's the just... <coughs> Excuse me. That's just how I um, make f effects or make command blocks inactive is to just add the double slash because that means then I'll know for myself that um, that command block is not being used. That was the mining fatigue. I think I'm going to trade that out for adventure mode, um, just switching people to adventure mode. Uh, but I've commented out yet right now because when I'm working on it, um, when I'm working on stuff, it makes it easier than having to add it in there and being changed to adventure mode every time I test. So uh, the other piece I've added, added is this. So this uh, whole setup is consistently powered on and off, on and off, and on and off uh, to create essentially a um, uh, clock that'll constantly update these command blocks. So what I have set up here is this command block is testing for players right now within a range of one. Now what this does is when I am on top of it, because it's only on top of it, I should say, because um, it only has a range of one, it'll detect that I'm there, send a signal through this comparator, send it through here, and to these uh, command blocks. Now I don't have anything in these command blocks at the current moment, uh, but what that means is that I can change this out, so I could change it to, for example, somebody that has uh, five kills, for example. That's a good example. So, if I set this to somebody who has five kills, it'll test for anyone in the, in the whole server that has five kills, and when uh, that gets tested for, it'll send a signal out, and I can have it, for example, end the round. Or I can have it uh, deploy some sort of thing. Uh, give that person a bonus, for example, um, or give them some sort of negative effect, a potion effect or something like that. Um, a buff, for example, like a kill. I could have this command block say, like, that person is on a killing spree and then give them a momentary, like, speed buff or uh, invincibility buff. Um, things like that. And I can do that all through here. And the cool bit is this reset. Now, what happens is when this this whole thing gets triggered, it also triggers this uh, repeater, which triggers this piston. Now this piston pushes this block over this way. Now right now this piston is extended because the round is over, and that is because I've set up right here a little reset um, 
that goes from this line, which is the round being over line, um, it goes from here and just over to this piston. And that is to reset this whole system uh, for the next time the round starts. But the cool part about it is that it'll only work the first time this happens. Once that happens, this block gets pushed out of the way, and no matter how many times this something happens and this block gets updated and sends out a pulse, there won't be a block here to do anything, which means that this, these command blocks can only be activated once per round. Now that's a really cool thing that I've added in um, that I'm pretty excited about. I did some extensive testing um, on one of my other computers just to see if it would work, and this is the most optimized solution just to get this kind of thing to work. So, the next thing that I've been toying with is these deals. Now, I'll show you this last because this is kind of more relevant to the functionality of this machine, but I want to show you this first because it's pretty cool, and I'm definitely going to be using it. Now, uh, what this is, is a variation on... Um, I cannot remember who, who it was who I stole this from. Um, yes, I steal redstone things. Ah, as pretty much every, every redstone person does, they find redstone things that they can use and they implement them. Um, so this is a uh, randomizer made with a hopper, and this is not a dispenser, but a dropper. Now, what this does is this dropper has a bed and a raw beef in here. Now, it doesn't really matter what items are in here as long as there's one item that can be stacked and one item that cannot be stacked. Now, the reason for that is that when this button gets hit, an item will get spit into this hopper. Now, as you probably know, if you know much about redstone and about this new update stuff, um, when hoppers have an item in them, they will send out a redstone signal uh, if there is a comparator next to them. Now, the cool part is, when an item that uh, takes up a whole slot, which would be a bed, because it's not stackable, so it's, it's taking up an entire slot, there can't be more of that item in that slot. When it takes up an entire slot, then, uh, oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Um, I have my my uh, time thing off so it doesn't spam the chat with uh, messages. Anyway, so uh, when a non-stackable item, an item that takes up an entire slot, gets spit into this hopper, then uh, this will detect that it's there and it will give the line here a signal strength of 2. But if it's a stackable, a stackable item, the item is only technically taking up a part of a slot, a partial slot, meaning that there are more items that could be put on top of that item in that slot, so it could contain more than one item. Meaning that this comparator is only going to give out a redstone signal of one. Now that's really cool, and what that means is that when you press this button, it'll pick a random item from here and spit it into here, giving a random signal strength. Now, what I've the only thing I've built in is just these repeaters here, that uh, extend off this way, and then this, which is a little, uh, I guess, signal blocker, and what it does is it's sending a, a redstone signal down there, here, and around, just to this comparator, or I'm sorry, uh, repeater, and what it does is when this, uh, when a signal is two, two signal strength that gets to here, this whole line activates, and it locks this repeater, so that this will not change even though both of these pieces of redstone are active. But if only one is active, this one will change it. I'll show you that in action right now. You can see that torch went off. You can see that torch went off. Now, if I take out this uh, repeater right there, you'll see that the first torch goes off, both torches go off. And uh, that is what this sort of uh, blocking line is for. It just helps so that I can actually have it randomized between two different outputs as opposed to a single output and then multiple outputs. Uh, so that's going to be really useful for things like if I want to do um, randomized effects or anything that's really randomized, I can have a redstone signal go to this and do some sort of random action, whether it be with command blocks or something like that. Now that's really fun. Now the last thing here is the team selection uh, deal. Now I... I am going a certain direction with this being that uh, people cannot choose teams. 
Now, I'm doing this because I always feel like it's more fun to put be put into a random team. I don't like the whole deal of being put into, like, f picked teams. Um, because I think if a lot of people are going to be playing this, f forcing people to uh, have good teamwork, hopefully, will be good. Um, I may build in a team selection deal later. But I always feel like a team selection thing will leave people out, and people will always go for certain players. Um, and then I have to build in some sort of team captain system. Um, so I like just how this works, because it's simple, very simple. Um, and it makes the game easy and accessible, and you don't really have to worry about picking team captains and then, you know, picking players for each team and making sure the teams are balanced and that sort of thing. So what I've done here... As I have this just little button, that's the base of the whole box, which will be more finished later. Um, but it's going to this command block that all it's doing is just teleporting a random player within a distance of 10 to these coordinates. Now, these coordinates happen to be up here. So right now, because I'm only the only player here, it's going to teleport me here. Now what that did, you, kind of, you may have missed it because of the quick action, teleported me on top of this pressure plate. Now what happens when I go on top of this pressure plate? As you'll see, it says, set my uh, team to blue. Now, I am in team blue now. Um, and what this is doing, basically, is this pressure plate is activating this redstone, which is turning off this torch. And this is just that same piston T flip-flop uh, that I'm using here. Same as the thing that I'm using over there for the wireless redstone. I use it all the time. The piston T flip-flop is amazing. Um, it's super, super effective. So... What it's doing is switching between these two uh, outputs. So I'm using a block of redstone just because it's easy. Because um, I like blocks of redstone, I suppose. So um, what it has is the two outputs. Uh, it has the one where the redstone block is in this state and one where it's in this state. When it's in this state, it activates these two command blocks. This one, which sets the closest player's team to blue and teleports them to blue hold now blue hold right now it means nothing um once i place a sign down somewhere in the world that says blue hold and then oh, actually i forgot this should have a uh dollar sign now it works um so this uh this will teleport oh sorry let me start over this uh relies on seth bling's um uh, sign command block sign filter that I use a lot. Um, basically, all it does is if I were to say place this sign here and give it blue hold or call it blue hold. If I ran his spawner filter or sorry, not spawner filter. Um, command sign command block sign filter. I'm sorry, I'm losing my ability to talk. Command block sign filter. What it'll do is replace this sign or it'll take away the sign and replace in here this with the coordinates of that sign. It just makes it easier to create points where you teleport to. So, now, th now that uh, I've showed you that, this one is actually set to these points, just so I could demonstrate. But the idea is that there would be holding cells, holding cells, finger quotes, um, just with uh, kind of a, probably a, a set of redstone things with a command block that's testing for a certain number of players. Um, just to make sure that the round can start because there are enough players on each team. Um, so what that'll be a little holding cell. Um, but the idea is it'll set the person's uh, team and it'll teleport them to their respective holding cell. But the cool part is is that it switches between the two every time. And because this is randomized um, and this will not be activated by a button, it'll be activated by some machinery, um, it'll pick a random player that's in what's going there's going to be a pregame holding cell um, and it's going to be this is going actually going to be underneath and detecting for players within that holding cell um, and what will happen with that is that it will be just taking random players so a ran each random player will be assigned uh, either red team or blue team and it'll just switch between the two for each random player um, and so that's I f kind of figured the best way to handle um, the best way to handle teleporting players into teams without worrying about um, sort of number of players because a lot of map makers I've seen 
what they'll do is they'll create a command block for each player, and each player will be teleported... Uh, well, okay, each player will will have its own respective um, slot, almost, that they'll get filled into, um, and it, it's sort of a complicated system, and I could have done it, and it actually might have been easier to then arranging the way I'm going to have to arrange what will be the holding cells and this kind of holding cell thing. It may be easier, but it also limits the number of players, so you'll have to have a certain number of players or below. This doesn't limit the number of players you can have, because it'll just content consistently do this until uh, it sorts everyone into teams. So, um, that's pretty much it. I don't really have much else to show you, but th this is this is the progress I've made just working on this, um, and I'll definitely have more next week. Um, I think these are going to be weekly, because I'm trying to work on this as much as I possibly can, get as much done um, each week as I can, because I, I really do want to make progress and get this finished decently quickly. Um, and maybe we'll get some videos with people testing. Um, I need to get this up on a server so I can get people up and testing. Um, and I may make that server public, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope some of this was interesting and informative. And uh, I hope that some things like these or these things, specifically this because it doesn't require any command blocks, um, I hope that those things were useful to you. Um, maybe kind of interesting and you learned some things. Um, so, thank you for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, also, follow us on Twitch... Well, no. Follow me on twitch.tv. Twitch.tv slash splice14. I stream things there from time to time. As well as follow us on Twitter. Twitter.com slash namelesspixel. Uh, uh, we send out video updates on Twitter. Every time we upload a video, it'll give you the link. Uh, so if you follow us on Twitter and you have it like RS or not RSS, but sent to your phone or whatever, um, you'll get our videos as soon as they happen. And uh, also follow us on Facebook or like us on Facebook or whatever. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash namelesspixel. We also have it set up so that the videos are posted on that page. So you can basically get our videos anywhere. Hooray! And without further ado, bye!